Hey, what's up, everybody? Let me situate this around. So I'm actually joining you from my living room, so it's a little different view for you guys um, today. <clears throat> and I hope that, you know, this would be, for, for some, this would be the last week of school. Uh, you know, I mean, it still is, but you're doing the e-learning. So I just want to say, hey, you made it another year, especially for the eighth graders. Uh, you made it past your eighth grade year and you're going to start a new journey in high school. So we'll, we'll all be praying for you guys as uh, you transition into that that role. Um, it's been a weird, you know, last few months. Uh, and so hopefully we can meet, you know, in the, in the summer as the church opens up and as we, you know, decide and, and discern things. So um, just be looking forward to that and seeing what, what we got going on this summer. So in the hope that we, we can have uh, some things going on. So uh, just be looking at your emails. Um, we don't know when that'll happen. We still have to figure that out and how that, what that looks like. So um, might take a little time, but it, we'll get there. Uh, and today we, I don't have anything that like for a series or anything I wanted to read. It was very timely for, for what's going on. Uh, I want to read what my devotion went through today and just how, uh, yeah, that's needed. And, and the Bible is timely. It, it speaks to us today. It's not just something that happened 2000 years ago. It's actually living right now. So, uh, I just want to 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 read that and you can follow along with that and then just to, uh, just a little discussion on it um afterwards so it's actually in matthew 6 so if you could turn to matthew 6 or you can read along uh or listen uh matthew 6 25 to 34 uh and it's the the part of i love this because this is practical application for us today it's not just like i said you know, something that they had to worry about, you know, back 2000 years ago and beyond, you know, it's, it's alive. It's, it's timely. So the title of this, this, uh, monologue or this, um, passage is do not worry. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? That really hit home for me, as, we'll, as I'll discuss. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was addressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And the, the devotion was talking about hope and where we place our hope in. A lot of times, especially people probably now, they put their hope in money because in the government and, you know, and all these organizations and stuff, they put their hope in people and things and possessions. And God says, you know, don't worry about those things. Because even he knows that you need them and he will give them the things that you need, or he will give you the things that you need if you seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. And that last line where it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. During this time, you know, I worry about a lot. Ever since I became a parent, I worry for my kids and their safety just because my kids are, are a little crazy. <laughs> um, but so I, I worry a lot and, and my mom was a worrier too. And so I can kind of relate now as an adult, what she kind of went through. And so I look at this passage and I say, wow, yeah, I, I should do that intellectually, you know, mentally I get it right. Mentally I, I understand like, yeah, worry doesn't add anything to your life. It just makes you 
think about that and then you stress out and the science behind all of that, I, I get really sciencey. It doesn't help you. It actually hurts you. And so Jesus, you know, a long time ago said, don't worry about all these things because God's going to take care of you. And so when we put our hope in Jesus, our hope in God, those things, those material things, the money, the, the possessions, the, you know, the food, the clothes, all these things, he will provide for us. And sometimes we don't, we don't believe that with our heart. We don't actually say, we say, yes, I believe that intellectually, meaning like, I get it. I can read that and understand it, but you don't, you don't, it doesn't register here in your heart. And the heart is the hardest, you know, Jesus says, guard your hearts because everything flows from it, right? Guard your hearts. So what we hope for, what we put in our heart should be things that are eternal. And things that are eternal are God's word and, and Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And so when I read this now, I look at it from a different standpoint because of everything that's going on in this world. Right now, you know, we financially, things could be bad, you know, for your family. Uh, relationally, it could, could be bad. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, um, not just in your family, but, you know, outside of this and, you know, it's, you, you worry all the time, right? So relationally that gets to people, you know, you could worry about the clothes. You could worry about where you're going to get your food. Um, you know, hopefully those things aren't on your mind that you have to worry about that, but they're very real things. We need these things, right? We need it to sustain life. But God says, you know what? Don't worry about those things because, you should worry about my kingdom and I'll give you all those things. And it's really hard to get that into your heart, as I said. And I read this now and I say, yeah, okay, God's got me. It's, it's the faith, the faith and the hope that things will get better regardless of your circumstances. So finding joy in our circumstances, you know, we're, we're secluded, we're isolated. We can't, you know, I mean, it's lifting now. So things are getting better, but in those times, after this, when things happen, bad things happen, things that you don't understand happen, look back at this time and say, God brought me through this. I can hope for a better future now. And things will get tough. They will, life will get tough. I'm not trying to be like a Debbie Downer or anything like that, but life will get tough for us all. It's not if, it's when. And a lot of times, a lot of some people experience a lot more heartache in this life than, than what we want or what we realize or, or more than what we think they deserve. But through it all, the joy, Jesus says, I will give you all these things. I will give you peace. I will give you hope for tomorrow because I take care of you. So when you get down, when you get like, why is this not getting better? Why can't this improve? Think back on this passage, it says, don't worry, God's got it, uh, and, and he's going to take care of you. And so one thing in my devotional, and what I'm going to start doing actually is, I create, I have a cardboard box, just a small cardboard box, I mean, I got a ton of them now, because Amazon Prime, it's just, that's where I get stuff now, especially more than ever. Um, but what it, I, I, you know, taped it up, I'm going to decorate it, whatever I, I'm going to, but it's just a cardboard box. And I cut a hole in the top of it and it says, anytime you worry, grab a piece of paper, slip a paper, write down that worry, put it in that box, give it to God. Don't even think about it anymore. And it's hard. It's going to, it takes time, but your worries are different than mine. You know, my worries are always going to be different, you know, but it all stems back to the same thing. Do we trust? Do we have hope in God? Because our worries are never going to go away. It's never, we always need food. We always need clothes. We always need finances. And that's just how the world works. But when we worry about it, it doesn't create any better an outcome. Only trusting in God creates a better outcome. So when I take that slip of paper, I write down what I'm worried about, put it in there, say, you know what? I might worry about that still, but I'm still, I'm going to give it to God and I'm going to let him handle it. And it's freeing to do that because you kind of say, oh, yeah, it's a physical way. You got to physically do it because, you know, you can stay up in here all day long. But until you physically do something about it and say, you know what, I'm going to give it up and I'm just going to let God handle it, then that is what is powerful. And that's what giving, that's what he means in this passage. So 
let's pray and then I'll, I'll, I'll get off here. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, I thank you that things are seeming to get better and, and things are, you know, the hope that we have in you and the hope that we have for a better day, a brighter future is just on the horizon. We can slowly see it. And I just pray that in the darkest of times when we do not see a way out and our circumstances seem very grim and dire, I just pray, Lord, that you are there and that we just trust and believe in you. I just pray that we have the faith and the courage to, to get rid of the worry and to get rid of the things that bring us down, that don't help us, that don't add hours to our life. They take stuff away from us. And I just pray that the fear and everything that, that you would just be right there with us. Um, we love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So looking forward to when we get back together and, and things start to slowly open back up and we can actually gather and we'll have probably, I mean, we'll, we'll figure some stuff out for events and all that stuff. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do that, but it's still tentative, you know, based upon guidelines and all that stuff. So we'll see, hopefully it, it lifts and uh, we can, you know, get together and do some things this summer. So um, yes, we have small groups again this week. It'll be the last week for small groups as well. Um, we'll try, we'll try to try to stay in touch otherwise, but uh, yeah, you don't have to listen to me ramble and stuff like that. So Alrighty. Hey, have a great day, guys.